Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by again to Bobby Fitzgerald Golf. If this is your first time here, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button so you'll know when I'm going to be on here and hit that the bell notice and also would you hit the like button for me? That'd be great. I really appreciate that and thank you for taking your time, your valuable time to come and visit me and see if there's something that I can let, teach you. You know, uh, Sun Tzu said in The Art of War, don't worry about what your enemy's strengths are. Find out what their weaknesses are. And today, uh, I'm here to tell you that what we really need to do is work on our weaknesses so that we can become better golfers and we can uh, have more confidence when we're hitting a shot and our whole game will improve because we're practicing our weaknesses. We're not just going out there and hitting the driver. Boom, 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 boom. You go out to the driver range, you know, and you see these people just banging away the driver and they never touch their pitching wedge. And they go out and play and, and they, they wonder why, gee, I practice so much, which I really don't because they're hitting the driver all the time. Uh, why can't I hit my pitching wedge 110 yards on that green? You know, we all have to practice. And so most people would be better off to do 70% iron, 30% with that driver. And uh, is it important to hit the driver well? Of course it is. You, you have to practice that. But if you can't get on the green from 160 yards or 140 yards or 100 yards and, and two putt for that par, your scores are not going to reflect what practicing you do do. Do do? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so we're going to go out here. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you before you ever practice, before you work out, things that you need to do and to help you practice your best and play your best. So first thing we're going to do is get our body ready for that by doing some stretching. Now when I go to stretch, I want to stretch with the, with the goal in mind of helping my swing. So I might put this in the back of my body like this, put this around, so that when I, when I stretch and I go like this, my core my arms and my shoulders are working together, just like they would in the golf swing. This is very important. It might seem funny, but this is important. And if more people did this, they would, their swing would be quite a bit better. And you, you can even, first I would do this, this thing. Well, you'll see my feet are pointed outwards. If they're like this, and I open them up, see the hip open? That means I can turn easier with no pain. We don't, we don't want a lot of stress on the joints because we don't want all those uh, hip replacements that you hear uh, golfers having to go through. I had a good friend who had a hip replacement and, and uh, he was back playing golf in about eight months, but you still don't want that. So make sure you limber up a little. Um, that way you're not shocking your body when you uh, have that uh, first shot, second shot, third shot, especially, you know, a lot of times on the first hole, you're know, not far three, so you're pulling out your driver and you start swinging real far, you go, oh, I hurt my back. Okay. So this is very important. Just, just limber up that back a little bit. And then you also want to do your stretching where uh, you're mimicking your swing. Something that's going to actually help you well, with your swing. So I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to push my rear out a little bit, go forward, then take my club and put it across my chest, like this. Okay. So now, I'm going to make the same movement, except I'm following the plane down to the ball. If this is my plane to get back here, it doesn't help me to practice this. I mean, yeah, you can, you can, you can stretch a little bit. So you want to help you also, not just stretch, but ingrain the movement of letting that shoulder come down. It's going to come under your chin, ideally, if you're anywhere near 90 degrees. And with your feet open, and the hips come open, you can get to that position. If you see this leg straighten up, and you've heard, oh, you shouldn't straighten up your leg, it's not true. That actually gets you ready to go towards that target, and you can push off of that. Do you want to stay locked in like that? No, you don't even want it locked. But there's not a problem with that straightening up. It's going to happen as you come down. If you have to do it like this, you're really in artificial territory. So 
This is lower because our hand is right hand is lower on the club. Okay. So this is going to be our stretch. Again, don't let don't get, let it hurt you. No problem with bringing this back. And has that open? That opens up more. Opens this up more. You can even go back farther. You see that? All these things will help seniors, especially, but it will help anybody who has any back problems or, or doesn't want back problems at all. See, so, so you do that a while. Again, take your angle. Follow that plane. Once you go like this, and you're level. And I say that's one of my faults. It's coming a little too level. So I need to. Everybody needs to work on something. So, just follow that plane. The plane. The plane. And then all the way through. So you get your body limbered up. And, you know, we worry, we use our feet and our uh, legs a lot in this way. Your power source, you're connected to the ground. And uh, so you're going to use those. So you can do some squats. And however you have to do them, it's fine. If you don't feel like you're steady, that much. We don't want you ever getting hurt. Don't do anything that you think is going to hurt you. No problem with putting your hands on here. Just, just do some nice bends to stretch. Stretch these hamstrings. You know, you can take your time. You just don't, when you go to swing, you just don't want to shock your body. So the first thing you would do, once you've got your stretching and you're feeling pretty good, you don't pop out your driver. What I will do is I'll take out my pitching wedge. And I will start hitting little shots just to get my body moving. So I'll try to do shots that um, I'm going to have on the golf course. So I will practice my chipping a little bit. We all know I've done a, a, a pitching and chipping videos. You can go back and see those. But we're going to stand closer to this ball. I've only got like one club distance between my heels. That's all. Because we're hitting a short shot here. And I want my weight going towards the target. Very easy shot. We're not going to hit it real hard. Say we have to go over two or three feet of fringe. And then we're going to roll another 15, 16 feet. So the, the club head basically will do the work. We're just going to take it back. And let it fall through the air. Just like that. Don't have to hit it hard. Um, we're not hitting a lob shot way up in the air. We're just trying to get over this fringe and have it rolling towards the pin. A ball that's rolling will tend to go in the hole a lot more than a high shot in the air and hoping it stops and not hitting it too far. We're just trying to get that on there the easiest way we can and roll it to that hole. There we go. And do that until you're comfortable. Don't worry if you hit a few that don't get up in the air. You, you hit a few skinny. You're practicing. You know, you're getting better and better at it. Just like the first couple I did was not great. You, we have a tendency to use our wrist a little bit too much. We have a tendency to cup, cup our left hand. We have a tendency to rush it. And you don't need to rush it. Just like the last few, we, the face of this club has to hit that ball on a slightly descending uh, blow. That doesn't mean you're going to take a divot. You can just scratch that. Can you hear that? Just scratch that. Just scratch it. Just make sure you get it up in the air. Like that. So it's not as hard as it seems. Once you do that, well, you, you can also, I'm going to get these balls here. Yeah, I'll grab a few more over here. Do that until you, and then graduate to a little more distance. You know, that's what you're here to practice, to learn, you know, how hard do I have to hit this to go?
110 yards, 120 yards. It's good to keep a journal, and a lot of us have little notebooks right on our phone. You can put right in your notes, you know. Uh, I hit my pitching wedge when I hit it solid, and I hit it that way most of the time. I hit 115 yards. I'm talking about whatever you do, because it doesn't matter what I do or anybody else does. You need to know what you do, so when you've got that shot to the green, you can make that count. You know, so then after I do that, I'll grab a seven iron. I work my way up. And uh, it just helps you to be limbered up and, to, and to, to feel comfortable with those clubs rather than being out there and the first time you've hit your seven iron might be on the third hole. And you think, oh, how far do I hit this now? Uh, you may already know, but still, just to have that memory of just doing it at the driving range helps so much. And again, if you're starting with the seven iron again, you may or may not want to do this, but it's not a bad idea. The picture that's having to go two or three or four feet, I say you're off the fringe, and say the pin is back there 25 feet, 30 feet. You do the same thing as you did with your pitching wedge. And that's the beauty of changing clubs like this, just for more distances. You don't have to change the shot. Because the loft of this club, because there's less loft, it's going to send the ball a little farther. So we just want to make sure we put it in the air a little bit. Weight's going towards the target. My hands are a little bit ahead. And just see, when I say descending blow, I'm not saying go ahead and take a divot. You just got to be getting that ball up in the air. Let the club hit it on a descending blow. See, I'm not taking it back real fast, and I'm not jerking it. Like, people get so nervous, you know, and, and they instinctively... A lot of times I just can't help it. They take it back too far. They know it's too far. Your body knows, and your brain's trying to help you out as much as it can. Your body's a genius, so it, it knows you're going to hit too far, so it, you, you tend to decelerate. That's going to go too far, so you go. What's more aggravating than hitting your chip shot from four feet and not even getting on the green? Talk about ticking you off. <laughs> that really bugs you. So. Try to ingrain yourself. You can even go over here and just practice. Take it back a little ways. Because the only reason that ball is moving to that green is some acceleration. I hit that ball. That was acceleration. But we're trying to get onto that green and let it roll to the hole. So we, you, you do have to hit it to go forward, to accelerate. But you don't have to come up to here. So just see what works for you, you know. As long as you get it up a little and let it run. That's the whole idea. We're trying to get this ball to land on the green and run that 30 feet or 40 feet. So in a little more than that, but not a lot more. Again, the club will do the work. You see how much slower I took that club back? And actually, I could have brought it back to the ball slower as well. I just don't want to be in any stopping motion. I wanted the club hit down at that ball. like that. I'm over the fringe. It's going to hit. It's going to run. A running ball has a lot better chance of getting it in that hole. And as long as you're not taking the club way back, you can really learn to do this well. The more you practice, the more you practice, the better you're going to get at this. And, and I don't care if it's, that doesn't mean me. It does mean me. It means anybody. If you don't think pros practice this, <laughs> Believe me, they practice it. They have to know. They have to get up and down and maybe make some of them. There's really not a lot to it. If The farther you get back, when you start turning your chip into a pitch, you know, if you're back 30 yards or if you're back 50 yards, you're back, I think once you're past 50 yards, 
I don't know if you can keep calling it a pitch, you know, because you can hit your 60 degree wedge, you can hit your sand wedge, you can hit your approach wedge, or your gap wedge, or however you like to call it. They're both the same thing. And then, so, after we get out of the, away from the seven iron, I usually go to a hybrid. Let me pick up some of these balls. Hope you're having a good day today. It's a pretty nice day here. I'm lucky I get to practice and give my lessons, and I'm not. I'm in the shade. That's a pretty big blessing. I'll take it every time. And uh, maybe I'll edit this out. Maybe I won't. Might as well spend some time with the people I'm helping. Let them see what I'm doing. Not only that, I'm not, I'm not great at editing anyway, but I'm going to work on that because it'll, there'll be more efficient videos if I learn to edit better. If I learn to edit at all, actually. Okay. So then I'm going to, because this is a hybrid, you know, normally instead of hitting this 23 degree, this is a 23 degree ping answer hybrid, which is about the equivalent of a four iron. So a four iron, if you hit a four iron, say, 180 yards, 190 yards, whatever you're capable of doing. Uh, of course, pros can hit, you know, 245, whatever, <laughs> crazy distances. Oh. But the four iron is going to go lower. The hybrid is made in such a way that it gets the ball up much higher in the air. <laughs> Excuse my hay fever. And as a result, it lands softer on the green because it's coming from a higher position. So. You'll, that's why you see so many tour players now using hybrids, and especially the ladies. The ladies, they, they've got a lot of hybrids in their bag nowadays because it just lands so much softer. And mm. Staying on that green is such a premium uh, that uh, these, are, these are just a huge blessing. So just like I'm hitting, but the only time I'm going to change my ball position is when I'm hitting a driver. I'm going to put it more forward. I'm coming up with a ascending blow, not a descending blow. Any other time, I want that ball to hit that face. The loft on this face is what's going to bring it up in the air. A lot of people try to help it up. They try to help this ball up in the air, and they're coming up at it, and they're hitting this leading edge right here. They're not hitting the face of the club coming down at the loft bring it up they're trying to help it up and they're hitting like they're coming up like this and a lot of people say yeah I, I can't really hit my fairway wedge at all it's because you're trying to help it up or you have your hands back so far that you can't get to the point where you're hitting a little down at it letting the, letting the loft of that uh, club bring it up in the air so let's go do the same thing as we were doing with the seven iron the same thing we we're doing with the pitching wedge it's going to be exactly the same. I'm going to put this like opposite my forward heel or an inch, inch and a half back of it. And when I put my hands ahead of the ball, I'm going to keep the weight on the inside here because I don't want my body shifting one way or the other. I want to cover that ball. You've heard the expression, he, he has it where he's covering the ball. My, my stance is a little wider, but not a lot. So I'm going to hit down on this ball because my hands are ahead. That's what's going to drive this ball up in the air a little. Kind of like that. And you know, you've got people out there who do some chipping from farther away, and uh, you'll see them use a hybrid, you know. I'm not a big proponent of that, but you can do it. So if you wanted to practice, because there is some, some loft on here, then you would do it the same way. It's hard to get that ball in the air from this distance if you're chipping. But a lot of times they're not trying to. They're just trying to roll it to the hole. There you go. I let that one go to the right a little, but that was more of a descending blow. There we go. So um, 
I would rather use a five iron if I had to go that extra distance or a seven iron or a nine iron, whatever. Uh, so most of the time when I'm hitting my hybrid, I'm not trying to baby it because I could always use another club. I'm just taking a regular swing. One good rule of thumb if you're hitting your irons badly is even your driver. It's just take longer to finish your backswing. Because if you if you go fast and you're jerking it, then you're you're really you're you're not in position anymore. You're you, you know your club is doing all kinds of things. But if you can if you can take this back slower and feel like you're in real control, the one one piece takeaway, everything moving together, keeping your uh, elbows in, your arms with this V. All of this stuff will help, and your hands ahead of the ball. If we can just get out of the habit, just get out of the habit of trying to hit it as hard as you can. Now you will have people who tell you when you grab your driver, hit it as hard as you can because overall, the farther distance you go, uh, the more birdies you're going to get. Uh, could be true, could that be true. Depends on how straight you hit that ball. A lot of times you go to hit the ball hard, you come over the top. That's going to put a glancing blow on the ball. When your club head comes from right to left, the ball goes right. Just like a ping pong paddle. If I had a ping pong paddle in, I went like this. It's going to hit that table and jump to the right. So you don't want that over the top move. And you also don't want a rushing move because then you're out of control. Just try to take a nice smooth swing and be in control the whole time. Hands ahead, weight going forward. Move around your head. Hit that ball. Huh. Like anybody else, we're all working on something. And like anybody else, I have to work on certain things. One of the things I have to work on is getting too speedy on the downswing. You know? And that's okay. We're here working on stuff. And uh, that's how you're going to get better. Um, if you were perfect, nobody would want to play with you. But you want, to, you want to practice enough where you can get do the best you can. So let me do this even a little slower coming back, but still have some speed with some rhythm. There we go. Got off my back uh, foot, under my toe a little. You know, when you're hitting these shots and you're starting your weight forward like I try to do, you don't, and I, hate to say this because you, you need to practice get, getting your weight over the other side and getting through the ball. But you don't have to you don't have to end up like this. Like that. With your toe up all the time. If you if you watch like the stack and tilt method, um, as long as you're over here hitting here, this isn't bad. That's not gonna kill you. You know, just depends on what it takes to get all the way around. Uh, is that when I was going to golf school and when I was playing a lot and winning a few tournaments, nothing you've ever seen. Most of them were uh, club championships and that type of thing. One, one state championship, but you still won't see that because that's in a group called the SIRS, Sons in Retirement. You have to be over 50 years old. And uh, lucky enough to take first place in the state championship, yay. <laughs> Those days are gone, the horses are out of the barn now. But, uh, Forgot my train of thought where I was going with that, but uh, yeah, take, have a nice smooth swing, and try to swing within yourself and know. Okay, I practice this enough. I know if I don't rush it, uh, it's going to be okay. You know, so just don't sway. Cover the ball. Maybe just the ball might be just slightly ahead of the buttons on your shirt, but you could even have it with a shirt to cover the ball. I mean. You could have it right underneath the buttons of your shirt. I like to have it between the buttons and, and where the logo would usually be, you know, whether it's an alligator, you know, they have lots of logos on shirts. And then just take a nice smooth swing. Keep everything together in one piece. And there you have it. So now you've seen what I do. I go through my stretching. 
I go through my uh, practicing uh, and I try to get these clubs going where it's step by step, pitchy wedge, seven iron. A lot of people do pitchy wedge, seven iron, five iron, and go to their woods. Um, I don't really hit my five iron that all far. I mean, I mean not that far, but that often. I usually will go to a hybrid. I ha actually have a 27 degree hybrid because it hits the ball so much far, higher up in the air, a little farther, and you can really control that ball. I mean, really, that's the name of the game, getting on that green so you can try to get those putts in for birdie or eagle or par, whatever, you know, it depends on what, what the level you're at. And uh, we all want to do our best, and that's what we're here trying to do. Uh, you know, I, I know you can go a lot of different places and get golf instruction. I'm not out at the golf course, so that might not appeal to people. But you know, you can learn this as long as you learn the fundamentals and find out what works for you. Uh, do the best you can. I'm really happy you came to see me. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. It helps me grow my channel and give me a thumbs up. Uh, uh, if I didn't help you with your game, maybe you like me. <laughs> the personality, I like this guy. Uh, until I see you again, have fun, never give up. God bless.